Faith Green. Okay. Good Go morning, ahead. Your Honor. I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied with the outcome. There's no punishment that fits the crime. Not even torture and death would be justice. Your justice will come when you burn in hell for all eternity, for murdering four innocent children, all because you're insecure as a man, plus the other two lives you took. You are a con artist. You are a monster. You are a devil in disguise. You are now forever exposed. I've thought over and over again what I would say, even though it doesn't even matter. First of all, I am not and did not and will not suffer like you intended for me to do. What you tried, what you tried to do didn't work. I am and was a damn great mother to all of my children. I was their mother and father. I'm the one who took out the time with each and, each and every one of them. I taught them, excuse me, I taught them how to do things as well as people in my family and friends. I taught Chadney how to treat a woman with respect how to fill out a job application, mock interviews, how to pay bills, encouraging him to give his all in his schooling, producing movies and his drawings. He was a great artist. He graduated from Specs Tower for digital media arts. He wanted to be a producer to make movies. I taught Kara to stay focused, aim high. I showed her how to drive, how a young lady is to carry herself in an orderly manner. Be all that you can be. Try out for everything that you're interested in doing. Pursuing higher education, we were filling out college applications. She wanted to be an OBGYN doctor. She was going to graduate this year from high school. I taught Coy to be open to new things like learning a new language, be confident in doing her schoolwork and in herself. She loved doing arts and crafts with me, letting her imagination run wild. She loved dressing up and putting on my high heels. She would make me laugh looking at me over her glasses like a little old lady. She loved ballet, cheerleading, and planting flowers with me. My Kaylee had the greatest memory. She loved singing. She loved to carry her purse, which was always filled with hand sanitizer and lip gloss. She loved getting her nails painted and sometimes doing it herself. She also loved ballet and cheerleading. She loved balloons and playing outside. I taught I taught them to be giving, loving, and respectful, to help others, to volunteer. They were not selfish children. Coy and Kaylee were learning about kids less fortunate than themselves. I took them with me to purchase items for Christmas and explained to them what we were doing to make them happy. I always encouraged them and told them that they can do anything they put their minds to do. Those are the lies that you took. You tried to separate them from each other. They are siblings who loved each other and spent time with one another. Trying to split them up didn't work. They are together more than ever. Chadney and Kara are still watching over their little sisters, Coy and Kaylee, forever. I carried each one of them in my womb for nine months and raised them. Nothing or no one, sure as hell, not you, can break me or break my bond with them. But while I stand up here trembling with fear, I put on my bravest face to be in the same room with the man who murdered all four of my children. Two of them violently in front of me with the gun, Chadney and Kara. And he killed my other two babies, Coy and Kaylee, with a hose that ran from the tailpipe of his car to where they were innocently sleeping. As if that wasn't enough, let me tell you about some of the devastation that it has actually done to me and my family. My short-term memory is gone. Doctors tell me it's my brain protecting me from the memories of my children being shot in their heads right in front of me while I was gagged, duct taped, and zip tied. Every time I find strength to get out of bed, as soon as I walk, I'm in extreme pain, sharp pain, from where he shot me in my foot. They don't know if I'll ever walk again without pain. Think about that for a second. Never being able to again to walk without pain. My doctors say I have post-traumatic stress disorder. That's where the migraines and nightmares come from. Sometimes I dream of the night all this happened and wake up screaming and sweating, thinking that I can save my children somehow. Then I realize that the nightmare is actually reality and my children are really gone and I try to find the strength to start my day somehow. 
Other times, there's just crazy nightmares that I wake up from in fear and try to understand them, but I am told that they all link back to this horrific experience I have had. I can't think of the last time I really rested without medication. I can still feel the zip ties around my wrist and it triggers horrible memories of that night. There's times I find myself drifting off into thought and then realize I'm not thinking of anything. I'm empty, lost, really, I'm lost, not really knowing what to do with myself, just existing day to day. I miss my children so much that words will never be able to explain. All I ever wanted to be was a mother, a wife, have a happy family, raise my children to be productive members of society and be happy. The reality I face now is this will never happen for me. Time will never heal this wound. I will always be empty. A part of me will always be missing. If the day ever comes when I do wake up and it's not the first thing that I think about, when I look in the mirror, I will always be reminded by the scars he put on my face, cutting me from my ears to my chin with a razor blade box cutter. The pain on the left side of my face never goes away. He cut me so deep that it severed multiple nerves that may never heal correctly. I lost so much blood. I was in critical condition for days. I should have died. Some days I wish I would have. He has scarred me for life. My whole family is devastated emotionally by what has happened. But it has extremely been hard on my parents. They love their grandchildren with all their hearts. Most days, my mother has a hard time getting out of bed and has been in the hospital a few times, but my father is taking it the hardest. <coughs> He's not the same person he once was. The stress has taken a toll on his health. Two weeks ago, he was taken to the hospital because he had a stroke. I honestly don't know where to go from here. I'm numb. There's a hole in my heart and soul that can never be repaired. The loss to me is so big that I will never truly recover for the rest of my life. I will be forever in pain and heartbreak. This wound will never heal. This wound will never heal. I would like to thank the court and you, Your Honor, for the time you have allowed me to speak. I would like to thank the prosecutor's office and staff and all the police officers who helped in this case. In closing, I understand the recommendation of the sentence, but I would like to recommend as a victim myself and the mother of all four murdered children, life in prison without the chance of parole. Thank you. Face Green.